Hi, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, this one tip that changed my golf game forever, it'll do the same for yours. It's a hidden power secret, really. We'll look at the width of the swing. Should it stay the same? Should it vary? At which point should it vary? If you can get a good mental picture of this, it will really, really change your swing, add tremendous power and solid contact. Well, briefly, if you're new to Scratch Golf, would love it if you'd subscribe to our videos, hit the bell there also, you would be notified every time a new video is coming your way. Well, we'd all like pretty consistent width in our backswing, stable sort of radius, but it doesn't work that way in the downswing. There are points where pros are very narrow, other points where, there's very, where they're very wide, and there's reasons for this and big advantages to you if you can capture it. I'm gonna show you here in just a moment what that looks like, give you a clear mental picture, then we'll get out and work on it. Wanna mention in passing though, the Scratch Golf Academy app. I hope you go to the app store and pick that up. Great training tools to take to the range. It's free tempo training, full swing tempo training, putting, green reading, etc. Pick that up, you'll enjoy it. Okay, elite ball striker in his days on tour, Grant Waite. Good friend of mine, Ralph, who takes a lot of lessons, tires of my obsession with Grant Waite swing, so still I'm gonna use him anyway. No offense, Ralph, so have a look here. There's the backswing width. This is what I want you to see. Let's continue that out to there. Now, let's switch colors. Let's look at the downswing. Now, certainly there's some weight shift. That accounts for a little bit, but it's not that much. So if we put him there, and let's say midway down shaft there, midway through maybe there so we can say in his downswing the arc is very very different in than it is in his backswing it's moved much over here so here's the image i would like you to have if you picture the downswing most of it the great majority of it should be out there on the front end you should be at the very back of this big wide circle out there and in a, a reference, let's say, that'll come into play when we get to our drill later, let's say the outside of his shoe, there's the club, his club head is there. He is more than a club shaft length away from the widest point of the arc at that, at that moment in the swing. Okay, three quick reasons why this is so important to go narrow to wide, then we'll get to our drill, I think you'll really like. Number one, law of physics called moment of inertia comes into play, that states anything you're trying to rotate in space, in this case a golf club, the more that there is weight distributed away from the center axis, the more resistance to rotational speed. Club and arms heavy at high speed, if they're closer to you, you can move with a lot more freedom and energy. Secondly, of course, is just lag. I mean, hey, listen, if you've got more bend here versus that, you'll definitely have more speed. And thirdly, especially on a fairway shot, it really helps solid contact. If you're, let me put this ball right behind that divot I just took there. Wherever you hit the ground will be the lowest point of your arc, which is pretty much shaft vertical. So if your swing is narrower here and wider on that side, you can pretty much be sure you're getting to bottom out point after the shot. Let's look at that drill. Okay, our drill involves an alignment rod with a towel draped off it, pretty simple stuff. Now, before we get to that, just very briefly, here's the three things I would emphasize when you're working on this in general. Number one, pliable wrists. Let them be soft and responsive as you start down. You could include in that, number one, no thrust. These arms and wrists have to be reactive. Number two, shift some weight. Even if your head moves a little bit when you get started, ideally it would be fairly still but shift some weight as you start down. A lot easier to do, by the way, if your arms are passive. And number three, I'd focus more on the width on this side rather than the narrowness on that side. If you get these first two right, get that softness, this will show up. So here's the drill. You may remember when we looked at Grant Waite there earlier in the video. If you took, say, this is the wind's blowing, say a club head width, a little bit more than that will give myself a little bit of space. I have a seven on. Making some little practice swings, feeling like I could just tap the towel there, like so, gives me the right feeling. Head, head in one spot now. I can sense that feeling of where the towel is and what that would require. And then simply go to the side, drop a ball down where you're in the same relationship. I've got some space not to hit the towel now and make a little swing and really try to emphasize that same thing. Mental freedom's the key, don't get bound up. Don't think too much, don't be afraid to make a mistake. You do this drill work on this, I know you'll get some good results.
I hope that helps you process this, do that drill. If you can get the widths right in your downswing, use a few of these keys, you will hit the ball a lot better, I'm convinced of it. Thank you.